Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on or has writing on the back or is ripped and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself or crumpling it or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're going to take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good, or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together. Hello 
everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. We're going to continue to explore our theme of framing this week. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Last week, we started to look at the theme of framing, and we were looking at composition, which was what we put into a frame. This week, I thought what we could explore was the opposite of that, or omission, or what's not in the frame. So, same as last week, some of the materials that I've gathered so that we can uh, explore together is some paper. And I went into my recycling bin and I grabbed some paper. It doesn't have to be fresh or clean paper. It can have uh, writing on the back of it, marks on the back of it, be folded. This is some packing paper that I had. So really any kind of paper will do um, because everything that we're trying today is not for keeps. It doesn't have to be a clean paper that's for a final project. Something else that I encourage us to use is some mark making tools. I'm gonna grab this off from the side. Ugh. So I have some crayons here, a bag, and then underneath I've got a whole bunch of markers and I'm probably going to just use markers while I explore, because it's a little bit easier to see on, um, on camera, but you can use whatever you want for a mark making tool. A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So a pencil, markers, crayons, pencil crayons. But if you have something else that could make a mark, if you wanted to be practicing um, framing or any kind of art making outside, you could use mud or you could use a stick in the dirt. Anything that makes a mark that you have permission and that's safe to use is great as a mark making tool. The next thing is a viewfinder or frame or camera. If you were exploring with us last week, you may have already made yourself a viewfinder. A viewfinder is just um, a frame that you can carry around to look through and find different views. I made these last week out of pieces of paper. This was just a white piece of printer paper that I folded in half and then I cut out a rectangle out of the center so that I could have a white frame. I did the same thing with some black paper that I had. And then from the piece that I cut out of the center of that piece, I made another viewfinder. But this time, instead of using scissors, I just ripped a rectangle out of the center. And so this is a really easy way for you to make a viewfinder. You could also, if you had permission, take the glass or plastic out of a picture frame and use the picture frame. Or if you had permission or access to a camera or a mobile device that allowed you to look through the screen because the rectangle of the screen becomes a view viewfinder, you could use that. The last thing I have on my list are some scissors. And so if you have a pair of scissors that you can safely um, use, or if you're uh, making or exploring with some grown-ups um, and they have a pair of scissors that they can use, then that's great too. I really love to rip paper. So whenever I have the chance to rip paper, I don't even use scissors. I prefer to just rip paper. So you don't even need scissors to be exploring along um, for anything that I ever make. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna move these stickies over to the side and I'm gonna move my viewfinder over to the side just for a second. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper we go. And let's start thinking about what's not in the frame. So before we even bring a frame over to our paper, we can have um, our image or our exploration or whatever we decide to put on the page framed simply by the fact that it's contained within the, um, the borders of our paper. 
So with my green background, anything that I put in here, even my hand is kind of framed by the white piece of paper, the background. It creates um, a place for us to focus on, a place for our eyes to go. And that's really what framing is all about, right? We've decided um, that everything that we have kind of cut off, that we've included in our frame, everything that's inside the frame is important. And everything that didn't make it into the picture or the image or the stage, that's not important. But what about when we want to um, imply or we want to draw attention to the fact that something isn't in the frame? And to do that, I think we need to make some objects uh, so that we can explore this idea of um, saying things by not having them in our picture. Okay, so if this becomes my background, or this becomes the place that we're gonna make on, I'm gonna take another piece of paper, but you could draw directly on to the piece of paper that you have, especially if you don't have a couple of pieces of paper. But I do encourage you to go to your recycling bin. You could grab some envelopes, uh, any kind of any kind of paper that you can you can use is great. I just happen to have a couple of these cut pieces of paper that were in my recycling bin. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna start by drawing a chair. Can you draw a chair too? Parts of the chair just a little thicker. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not for keeps, just to try and try things out. And there we go. There's my chair. And if you drew your chair on the side, side view, maybe your chair has a big puffy um, seat. Or maybe your chair had um, a back like this, two poles. This is very. This is this is the kind of uh, chairs that I had when I was in school, and then kind of metal feet. So whatever kind of chair you draw is just great. I'm going to use this chair, the big chair that I did here. And I told you before, I love to rip paper, but if you have a pair of scissors, cut out your chair. Okay. So I've now framed my chair by putting it right in the center of the page. Remember how we're going to pretend like the outside of the page is a frame? So I put my, my chair there. I could even take one of my viewfinders and I can put it around my chair as well. Before we go any further, what do you notice? What do you notice about your chair when you put your frame around it? Because it's the only thing in our picture, our eye gets drawn there, right? It's the only thing to look at. I mean, I have this cool frame here that has all these uh, ripped edges around here. Maybe your eyes get distracted um, by those, but once you're done looking at your frame, really there's only one thing to focus on, the chair that you drew or the chair that I drew. If we had other objects here, then maybe our eyes would be distracted, but we only have this chair here. The longer we look at this chair, what else do we notice? Well, the word that comes to my mind is empty or unoccupied. Nobody's sitting in this chair. I don't know where this chair is. I don't know what room this chair is in. I just know that it's a chair. And so the fact that I don't have other things in this scene or this picture is, 
is is saying almost as much as what I, in fact, it's saying more than what is actually available for us to look at. All that we can say is it's an empty chair. But there's so many questions that um, that happen. Now that we framed this, we've told the person who is checking this out, the, the people who are going to be looking at our picture, that this chair was so important that we put a frame around it. They get to ask questions like, why is this chair so important? Or whose chair is this? Or who normally sits in this? Or where is this chair? And so by not including other things, but by putting the frame around it, all that we're saying is, is this is important. And all the other information is up to the people who are checking it out to fill out. I'm going to take the frame off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add other things to our picture. Let's not fill the chair. Let's keep the chair empty. But let's take some time to fill in other objects. And I'm not going to tell you what to put on put in your picture. You can color the background, you can color in the chair. However you want to fill the scene is up to you. I'm going to turn my voice off for a minute or two and I'm going to add a couple of pieces to my scene and you can do the same. Okay, so I drew a few more things that I can add to my scene. The first thing I thought I could add is um, a room. And I think the simplest way that I can do that is just by implying that there is a floor in this room. Before, the, the chair was kind of floating, right? It didn't really have a background. It wasn't really in a place. The only thing we were really going to pay attention to was the chair. And so simply by adding a line to my background, all of a sudden we've said there's a place. This chair isn't floating. It isn't isolated. It isn't by itself. Um, it's, it, it's sitting on a floor. right? So now we've forced a place. We still have left out a lot of things though, right? So it's what's not in the frame. We really don't know what kind of room this is. Because we don't have any color in the room, we don't really know if it's light or dark. We don't know what the chair is made out of. We don't know what the room is made out of. We don't know if the wall is painted or if the floor is made of wood. We don't even know if this is inside or outside a place. What we do know, though, is there is a place and that it's probably an important place or an important scene because we framed it. So it still has all of these questions, even though we've added this one thing, we've eliminated the fact that it's just a chair, it's a chair somewhere. or at least I have, your picture is probably going to look very different than mine, and that's totally okay. One of the other things that I decided to add or to draw was a window. And I think that, okay, I'm going to move my sticky because you know who I am. There's the theme. Put it beside my little host here. And the chair probably isn't 
Um, I mean, it could be, but I think the window is probably more like up here. It would be really low window otherwise. So that's where I'm going to put the window right now. Same thing. Put my frame back in here again. And so here, I'm going to move it over just so more of the frame is in there. And so in an actual picture frame, we'd probably cut this section out. But right now we're going to imagine that our frame is the edge and that everything else that we can see uh, right now in, in our um, exploration and our play right now, that's not part of the picture. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got this window here. Is adding this window change anything to the scene? It could be inside now, because usually we see frames like this inside, but it still could be outside, couldn't it? All we know is, is that now it's a wall with a window. So it's probably not underground. It's probably not underwater. It's probably someplace where um, you can actually see something. So it's probably not uh, looking into, or, or it's a, not a brick wall, so this is something that you can see in and out of. It's probably some place where people want to be. So just by adding this little bit of information, we have uh, we, we've answered some questions, but we haven't answered where it is. What floor is it? Is it uh, a room for adults or kids? Is it um, a hot place or a cold place. There's still all of these questions that the person who comes and checks out this picture has to ask themselves. But the fact that we don't see anything through the window is also kind of interesting. What do you think is through the window? Your answer is going to be different than my answer. Whoever you're making with, or a sibling or a friend, when you don't put anything in the window, it's up to them when they see it, when they look at the picture. They get to decide who would sit in this kind of chair and what's through that window. They get to decide whether or not it's inside or outside because we didn't include that information. And that's kind of cool. We give them part of the story, but then they get to write the rest of it. Let's keep going. So I'm going to add a sleeping cat to my chair. I'm going to put a rug on the floor. Here, I'm going to pick up my, my frame. I'm going to move my floor over to the side. There we go. I'm going to take my rug. I'm going to put the rug. Or maybe the chair is under the rug just part of the way. There we go. I'm also going to add a table. I'm going to add the table. Oh, maybe I'll add the table. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut a little bit so we can see the rug underneath here. And just because you drew something to begin with doesn't mean you can't go back into it afterwards, cut more things, rip more things, draw more pictures. And remember, because we're exploring what's not in the frame, you could draw something, put it in the frame and decide, oh, nope, that's too much information. I don't want to make that decision for the person who's going to be looking at this picture. I want them to make up their own story or their own idea of what happened there. I'm also going to put the lamp that I drew. OK, so I've added a whole bunch of more information to this room. I'm going to put my frame back down and let's read this picture together. If you're making along or making um, your own picture, you're going to uh, have different objects. You don't have to be reading along with my picture. You can um, just be uh, reading yours. You can also, you also have my permission to exactly copy what I'm doing and do all of these pieces and move them around and see what happens when you place or take objects away. Well, by adding all of these things, we added the rug, we added the cat, 
We added the table, we added the lamp, we added a lot of things. So now it's very likely this is inside now, right? It's probably not going to be a room that is outside with a lamp and a rug, right? What happens if it rains or it gets muddy? Um, so this is probably an inside room. So we've, we've declared that now, we've stated it, we've made it true by drawing something or adding something to our scene. We probably also know that it is a safe inside space because we have a cat sleeping here. There's probably some electricity because there's a lamp here. Um, this room probably gets dark at night because there's a lamp here. Um, what else do we know? The probably people like to sit here so at this, this table beside it because why would they need the lamp or the window beside the chair if, um, if they were never gonna sit there? So it's probably something that people do things here. Uh, maybe they craft or crochet or sew, or maybe they read books, something that they're going to need light by. Does the cat need the light? Probably not, but maybe. Maybe we, we uh, put this, this scene together because we want the person who is looking at our picture to laugh and go, the cat needs the lamp to be comfy on the chair. Or maybe the cat being in the chair is keeping somebody from sitting in this chair. This cozy space with the rug and the lamp and the nice chair by the window. Maybe what we're supposed to think is that by not seeing the person who would sit in this chair, um, they might, they, maybe they're the ones who are taking the picture. They can't sit in the chair because the cat is there. So by not having a person in this picture, we also get to, to um, guess the scene. We get to guess why this information was captured, why everything that's in the picture is important. So we're crafting a story by what's in the picture and what isn't in the picture. I have a couple more objects here. I, I drew this one to have um, a curtain. So there's a curtain rod, and you can put your curtain on it. I don't think I'm gonna pull this in just because my, um, my window ended up being really tall. I think it's this one. There was my curtain. And then I've got a picture frame, which I can bring in here. And I, I was laughing when I drew this because I drew a chair inside my picture frame to be kind of funny. So what do we notice? My eye still goes to the chair because the chair is in the center of the room. And I really think that this is a, a cozy space because of all of these little pieces that we've put in here. This is probably a space that somebody um, cared for. This is probably a space that is supposed to be comfortable because the cat is there. It's kind of cozy because of the rug. All of these things tell us the story. What happens if we start taking things out of the picture? So the cat, the cat brought a lot of information, right? We were able to guess a whole bunch of things. So maybe the cat was keeping somebody from the chair. Um, the, the cat was um, cozy in the space, that this is a space that would be safe for a cat all of those things. And so the cat said a whole bunch of things, but now we take the cat out. What changes? Is it still the same? Is it still a cozy or safe space? Is it still an inside space? What if we keep taking things away? slide this out of print so you can frame it in. Yep. What about now? What's changed now that we've taken some things away? It still feels like an inside room, right? Maybe it's not a place that um, people go and use as often now, though probably something that people only use in the daytime because 
of uh, when the window gets dark, right? Who would want to sit here? This table is probably there for a function so that people can be putting things on rather than it being decorative or holding the lamp. So it's kind of a bare space, kind of a functional space, a space that can be um, useful, but maybe not a space that you'd sit around for very long. What if we take the table away? What about now? Is it still an inside space? Whose chair is that? What kind of room is this? What are we supposed to think about when we see this chair by itself? Let's keep going. I'm going to take the window out. Remember that went back to us going, what is it an inside space or an outside space? The picture frame still kind of implies that or um, says that it's inside. But what happens now? Now it's just a chair and a picture of a chair. What do we know? Or what do we guess by not having all that information? What if we move the chair to the side and have the chair here? picture here. Whose chair is it now? What kind of room is this? I still think it's kind of a funny picture because it's the chair with a picture of a chair. Did the chair take the picture? Is the chair the character we're supposed to pay attention to? And this is a self-portrait of the chair? Is this somebody who took a picture of a chair beside a chair because they thought it was funny? Do you think it's funny? What information do we not have in this picture? Right? We don't have a lot of information, but we can still make guesses. We can still make a story. And that's the fun thing about what you decide to put into, but also what you decide to not have in a picture. And when you take a viewfinder out into the world, if you went to go take a nature walk and you were to just look through your picture, the idea is, is that it focuses our eyes on everything that's inside, right? It makes us um, decide that everything within the square is important. And that's where we should focus our view, right? It's a viewfinder. We're finding views. But what if we don't look in the frame and we look at all the things that are around on the outside of the frame that we don't capture? If we pay attention to all of those things and then we look at the view on the inside, how does, how does it change? What do we notice? Do we notice that things are missing? Do we miss them? Do we feel like we want to move the frame to capture the thing that wasn't in that view? These are all really great questions and why it's awesome to have a viewfinder with you when you go um, away from your art making space. Have it in your pocket. If you make it a small viewfinder or if you make a big viewfinder like this, you could fold up and stick in your pocket and go for a walk and see what you see. See what you don't see. Move your viewfinder around and change your view. What kind of stories can you make by framing and not framing certain things? This is just one way of exploring framing, and I'm excited to keep exploring with you next week for our third week of exploring framing. You can check out last week's episode on our Facebook, our YouTube, or our website at Artstarts dot com slash explores dash online. I'm going to leave my camera running for a little bit like I do every week because uh, part of the rules of explorers is respecting our space. And so I'm going to clean up my space and get it all ready so that we can explore together next week. And I hope you do the same. See you soon. Bye for now.